Now most people know Missouri because it's famous for its range of drills. However, the manufacturer has now started making hedge cutters. Join me now as we talk to the man himself, Mr. Martin Lowell, who's going to tell us why, Martin, why have you made a hedge cutter? Oh, maybe for a few years I've been thinking about hedge cutting and doing our own hedge cutting on the farm and I felt it's time to move on a little bit. One of the things that a lot of people have been asking for is maybe something to make the job a little bit simple. So what we've introduced into this machine is a connection between the main frame of the hedge cutter and the rear frame of it. So between the linkage and the rear part of the machine, we have a pivot. So as the tractor rolls and rocks with the changing contours of the ground, the head will maintain a level contour to the hedge. So it's an assistant to the pilot or so. So you've essentially got an automatic levelling system. Correct, yeah. Which works independently of the ground. Absolutely. So it can make me look good, hopefully. Oh, well, that's hopefully. the kind of thing. It's made my hedge could look better than perhaps it would have been. And the other thing is, then, from a point of view, well, there's no point just making something the same that's already out there. So we've looked at changing the head. And the head now is a, a rotor, three rotors, more like you see on a lawnmower. Mm -hmm. And what are the advantages of that, then? The advantage of that will be using a heck of a lot less power, it's quicker, but also would make the head a lot wider. So a five foot head on this machine weighs no more than a four foot head, but equally is a far more reliable. There's no rotors to bend, no balancing needed. No, no flails wearing out, no, flying no off. It's just a simple No knife. clattering, banging, anything no, like that. No, none of that. You won't hear any of that when you start up. So it's a much simpler head, but also if we look at a rotor that way, the normal flail rotor, very little contact, maybe 20, even 60 degrees as much. When it's going this way, you're going to have 360 degrees of the rotation. So you've got in. the front half taking the big major cuts mm. and the back half doing a clean sweep. Clean sweep as back. It were. So you're getting two really useful cuts out of one rotation. Okay, and what sort of thickness material are we talking it can handle? Well, that's the other thing. Hedge cutting regulations have changed. Some farmers are only cutting every three years. Certainly every other year is what we're allowed to do and some hedges get missed because of crop rotations and we're talking hedges growing up, you know, the, 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 the main stem of it, over 100 mil. That's no problem to this, it just raises it off. Okay, and who are you aiming this hedge cutter at then? It's got to be aimed at really the, the most commercial market as far as we, we see it is the farmer owner user who's, they see that it's changing, we're seeing a bigger demand maybe for the farmer wanted because the regulations are tightening it down. January, February is a fantastic time to use the, the machine. We have slightly wider headlands and off we go. And we do a cracking job and the, the, most of the berries are fell or been eaten by the wildlife. It's a good time to go. So essentially, give, give the farmers something to do over winter. Plenty to do over <laughs> the winter. The arable farmers, are it? Yeah, I, well, <laughs> stock farms, I've got to think it, but yeah. certainly the arable farmers have got something to go at. Yeah. yeah. This head is a narrow head, although it's deeper, as we stand it, in that you've got five foot. There's not much dead weight to it and it's very narrow this way, great between fences and edges. And from a maintenance point of view, there's nothing to do. When we actually look at this end, um, there's, there's no grease nipples, it's sealed bearings. Uh, this machine's done a whole season, I've not put a grease gun to it, which is great for me because I tend to forget. <laughs> and, As many do. <laughs> and, and, you know, you're not wanting to be in a while, but if you get anything, nothing can wrap to it. It's yeah. a really simple. And the adjustable head. elements on the head, what, what we're From talking From the operator's there? point of view in the cab, um, we adjust the rear roller. There's a ram here that operates the rear rollers go up and down. And from the front, the hood lifts up and down. And this is important because one of the things we want to do is reduce the amount of debris being thrown around. Yeah. And you can notice this tractor, okay, it got cleaned before you guys come, but there's no <laughs> debris over it. With the hood set correctly, there's nothing goes in front, nothing comes out the side. Well, very little, nothing to cause a problem. You've got two great innovations on this machine. Why has no one else done it before? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll ask those questions. Um, I don't know. Uh, there's nothing wrong with a uh, level head. They're expensive to run. I think that's getting more concerned, particularly the bigger heads. Yeah. Um, they're expensive for flails. The reliability is questionable. This thing is very simple. Excellent. Martin, thanks very much. Right, drive time. So as you can see now, we're in the field trying out the new Missouri Razorback hedge cutter. For a start off, what a cool name for a hedge cutter, a Razorback. Sounds like it means business, and as you can see, it does mean business. We've got about two years growth on this hedge here, which at 1,100 revs from the tractor, powering a twin pump on the uh, hedge cutter, which is a one pump for the, all the controls and hydraulics, a one pump for the uh, head. It is managing that really, really well. 
We're told it will handle material up to about 50 millimetre, well, no, four or five inches in diameter, which looking at the, uh, the rotors on it, we can well believe. Control wise, they're pretty self explanatory. This isn't the final uh, solution that the company will be uh, providing when it goes into full production. This is purely a pre production uh, control box, but it's got everything you need on it, very simple. The primary controls that I'm using, obviously, this joystick, which can control four services. We've also got forwards and backwards for the main lift up and down, side to side, which sends the boom in and out. And then give it a twist, and then that's your uh, your rotor head action. Controls are quite sensitive. They take a little bit of getting used to, but so does everything. But I'll tell you what, once you're used to it, it is very nice to use. Not quite sure how heavy the hedge cutter is, but on this uh, 6480 Massey Ferguson, it does seem quite well balanced. Like I said, it's using hardly any revs at all, but it should be good for the fuel use. As you can see, we're just doing the sides now of this hedge, and the finish is pretty decent. Uh, in fact, let's go up a couple of gears and see what happens. Now, I'm not demonstrated too much in this field because we're on a pretty level playing field as it were is the new auto level system on this machine which is uh, the first in the industry and it's it's really hard to imagine why no one has done an automatic level system before right now I've got it turned on it's uh, hard to tell it's doing anything but it is you can just feel it and see it, looking on the spirit level at the back of the machine, it is just doing its little thing there as I go up and down the odd ridge here and there. It just takes away, you know, that extra effort and input that you'd normally need to do when you're hedge cutting. Again, just making the job a lot easier and a lot more comfortable to do. And if you were doing this many, many hours of the day, I think you'd be thankful for this new auto level system, or co-pilot as you call it. As the name suggests, it's a bit like having someone else just controlling the, the level for you, rather than you having to constantly do it. Now, one of the great things of, about the head using rotors instead of, well, rotor blades instead of a, a flail rotor is the fact that the, uh, the hydraulic motor which drives them is situated behind the head, rather than at one end of the head, which often can get in the way. Sometimes now, if it was on this side of the head, the inside of the head, it'd be catching on the floor right now, but I've got nothing. I don't know if you can tell if it's picking up on my mic or not, but it's very smooth running. Often with a, a flail rotary head, all you can hear is clatters and bangs. I mean, it depends what kind of material you're cutting into. But this, you know, there's no vibration on the head whatsoever. Which should make running costs a little bit easier. You're not going to have to get your rotor rebalanced every uh, every so often. Plus, you've got no flails to replace. You've just got big, solid blades, which should, hopefully, last quite a while. That is yet to be found out. Overall, then, I think definitely hats off to Missouri for what they've created here. They have literally addressed two major issues with edge cutters which for some unknown reason haven't been addressed before you've got number one which is an auto leveling system which really does just take a little bit of effort out of the job and can uh, almost turn an average operator like myself into a half decent one second one is this new head design using rotors horizontal rotors rather than a rotary flail Handles more material, less wear and tear, simpler, and has more cutting area as well. Anyway, if you want the full report, go to fginsight.com forward slash machinery. Like I say, you find the full report, all the technical details, lots of pictures, and uh, a bit of a vid. I'm saying that, you're already watching the vid, so cheers.